I've not done some translation. I'm not completely done with it. But if I want to go ahead and uh, build a language module for this one, um, I will have to now export the files that I need to import into NLE. And you can't export to the binary module, the language module, but you can export to the text one in here. So if I go here and say advanced translation, export a translation file. And I want to export my German text layer. And I can actually export it as a different one. So in the case of German, there actually is three text layers in here, uh, Austrian, Swiss, and German. Um, all use the same text for my purpose in here. So I can actually translate once and then export or else the different languages in here. There is a couple of options to add token if it was not translated. And that will, I'll just do that one in for my German in here. And we can actually see what it will look like inside the product. And I'll just make this one, it's called DEU. And uh, go ahead and click OK in here. So I now have a new text file. And I have all the A1031 in here. And a lot of these one has this token behind them. And that's the one that are not translated. So if you only do a partial translation, users that see this one can report that say, hey, I have this one has not been translated yet. And you can go do that one. So you only do the one that are important and not all of them in here. And I don't want to have it look like this one when I get into NAV. So I'm actually going to have uh, a second export in here. And uh, I'll just go in and say translate export. And instead, I don't want to add those tokens in here. Now, um, oops, that was not what I wanted to do. So, so if I now take a look at that one, of course, all my extra uh, information uh, here disappeared at the end of that one. So. Um, and I'll need to switch to the database where I have the application in. And this is one on there. I need to filter on all the objects. And I then need to do the translate import. And as I do this translate import, it will completely trash my modified date and time because I'm really doing a lot of changes in here. So if you want to go back to this one, Later, you have to save all the objects before doing this import because it's going to change everything now. Here. That's my German one in here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that one. And as I complete this one, I now have my German text layer in here. So if I go here looking, blocking priority, I can see I have my German text, and I have my uh, English text uh, now uh, for this field in here. So I have added my caption in here. I can now go in and say, yeah, that's fine. I have my German text. Now I actually want to create a language module uh, for this one. And the language module is a binary one. So I'll go in and select my file name. And I have an option actually also to delete the language. I'll just type it in here. Um, to get rid of it actually in here. So, and that's what you would do if you import a language and you need to upgrade or something like that one, compare the code. It's going to have a huge amount of changes for that one. But if I delete the language in here, I'll go ahead and only have the languages uh, left that was uh, except the one I actually deleted. In so it allows me to get rid of it again before an upgrade, I think, for that one. It's also very useful if you have customizations to the base product um, in your solution. You can actually delete the German text layer from the base product. And then you import your text layer from the text file. 
meaning only the tokens that you have added in there. When you export your language module, it won't export the base Microsoft German text layer. It only exports the differences that you have added. And that means you can build your own unique one without actually interfering with any of the translation from Microsoft. So uh, let's see if I can change the language in here. And uh, because I actually opened up this uh, client after I moved the German text layer, I need to go here and uh, open this one again. Uh, I don't know. To change my license. I now have my uh, language, my German language in here. If I go here and run my table, I can see I have my German translation uh, for the few fields that I actually did in here. It has now been translated. And if I look in the folder, I have my German language module that I can actually send to people also. So this one basically uh, concludes the uh, process of translating uh, to another language by using the merge tool. The whole key to this one is um, that you're actually using other translations that you have already done. In my case, I imported the W1 down here and use that one for actually translating my application. Then under the translation, there's a lot of things in here that you can actually use for either look up to existing translations. Um, you can also look up to this one, what was called earlier. You can find a uh, translation, you can use an Excel spreadsheet, and under advanced, there are several things in here. One is actually a technical check comment in here. So if I calculate this one, I don't know if I actually have anyone for this one, but there is a new field in here. have anyone in here. No, I didn't. But I can make one that actually will cause a problem. Because what this one will do, it will go in and verify that everything works right in here. So if I find a menu item down here and call this one, I'll just make this one the D being the hot letter here instead. The first menu item in the German uh, version is called uh, Datei, and I'm actually going to make a, a conflict with that one, where, I um, see this one was actually translated to German, so... Uh, I'll just try some different letters in here to see if so up here I can see D B A X F has already been used. So if I actually um, use some of those ones. that one actually has anything in it. What I'm looking for here, you can see these letters, it know which one actually are used in here. So I just need to find something in here that uh, actually has those letters in it. And I think this one. D is the system hotkey in here. And if I actually go in and calculate my technical check comment, that's one of the things it will actually tell me out there. The other thing is um, it will also know about options. Or See, this one is uh, a string that actually is uh, a page name ML up here with the different tabs. 
if I go in and translate this one wrong, let's say I get rid of this active session in here. If I now calculate my technical check comment, it will tell me uh, that the number of options does not match uh, in here. And that's an important thing also uh, to actually have right in here, um, to have this one in here. There was actually one thing I forgot when I did it before. You can use what is called the partial translation from other things. So in the case where something is between commas, it will actually search for substrings in there. And it will replace that one. So if I actually go here to W1 and use that partial translation, you will see that it actually took the general and put in a left draft of it in there. So, uh, and it checked the partial it translated out here. So that's another nice function where you can see all these um, page name and mail. That's why it works best, this function. But this one is basically the check function and everything in here. It has been used for translating huge applications, this one. There is, of course, some issues with the same text in one language, meaning two different things. Can't be two separate text in other ones, but those one can be dealt with manually. This one will get a huge bulk of your translation done. And it uses a tool in a standard NMV to create language modules and you use the text import export functions inside of the